Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob, how's it going? Uh, Bob and I today are skiing on the brand new 2022 Rosignol Experience 86 Ti. Yes, 86. Yep. A uh, brand new line of Experience skis from Rosignol for 2022, which is kind of exciting because there's a lot of carryover for next season. Yeah. You know, there aren't two, we have talked about it, there are some companies that revamp lines and stuff like that, but definitely a lot of carryover so exciting to get like a whole new line from Rosignol yeah um, kind of carrying forward the experience theme of being an all-mountain ski um, but I don't know I think they they carve better for sure than the 88 yeah yeah, yeah definitely definitely um, and then Bob you skied them in, in some bumps and, and you were loving them in the bumps too I mean they're 86 underfoot and they're pretty light for having metal in it you know it's not a burly metal ski right um, it's you know feels a little lighter on the feet so like yeah really fun in the moguls too so yeah really well-rounded ski very precise I yep. think is a good word for them which makes sense because then like the black up skis kind of are looser and more free ridey yep um, so yeah, pretty exciting stuff. Uh, we're gonna take a few more runs and then I'll meet you back in the studio Talk about the changes to this ski compared to the old skis performance and, and all that kind of stuff Hey skiers, here we are back in the studio to talk more about these new 2022 Rosignol Experience 86 Ti skis. Um, pretty exciting, you know, there's a whole new line of Experience skis, like I was saying in the intro, like they, they really took the collection and like completely revamped it. New shapes, new construction, uh, new widths too. Um, we go from 86 to 82 instead of from 88 to 84, so kind of interesting. Um, I brought a 2020 Experience 94 up here um, just so we could kind of look at some differences. It would have been cool to have the 88, but we're sold out of the 88, which I didn't even realize. Um, but yeah, we had, luckily had a 94. I think we had some 92s as well. I just happened to grab the 94 so we can look at the differences in shape and stuff like that. Um, but here it is. This is the new ski, uh, and a lot went into this. You know, I think that's something that has been a trend with Rosignol for a while now is they're one of the companies that uses a lot of different materials, a lot of different technologies, you know, a lot of engineering goes into their skis to result in the performance that they want. And the experience line in general has, you know, gone through some significant changes in its existence. You know, we used to have less rocker, more of an extended side cut. Um, I'm sure you guys remember that ski and then we went to kind of this shape with a lot of influences from like the 7 series so we got more taper up in the shovel more pronounced rocker stuff like this and now we have this new shape which is pretty darn cool um, and new construction too and I think let's start with construction because there's a lot going on here like I said uh, starts with a poplar wood core um, what's really cool about the poplar wood core in this ski is it's, uh, I forget what the certification is, but it's, it was harvested from a forest that uses sustainable forestry practices. So that's great. Um, Rosignol is pretty committed to sustainability, um, eco-friendly practices. Their factory uses like 100% carbon-free energy, which is super cool. So poplar wood core, 
um, and it's an eco-friendly poplar wood core, which, like, why not? Uh, and then we get Rosignol's carbon alloy matrix, which we've had in a lot of skis now. We've talked about it quite a bit. Basically, it's a weave of, weave of carbon and basalt. Um, you guys probably can't see it, but I can actually see it kind of just under the top sheet of the ski. Um, and then Titanol. We get Titanol in these new skis. So we had Titanol in the previous skis too. You know, this is the Experience 94 Ti, um, but in those skis it was line control technology. So they had that vertical strip of metal, um, basically construction that was kind of taken from their race skis and then reapplied to, to that ski. In this ski, on the other hand, or contrary, uh, we get kind of more traditional laminates of metal. So we get two sheets of metal in this ski. There's one along the base, or, or just under the core, rather, um, that's pretty much full width, full length. And then we get one along the top of the ski, kind of on top of the core, that's full width underfoot. And then basically tapers, you know, as, it, as you reach the tip of the ski. Uh, which makes sense to me because you can kind of see it like the the way that the sidewall works it's kind of a taller sidewall underfoot and you can see that metal in there and then it, it sort of like almost turns into semi cap construction i don't know if i'd go as far as calling it true semi cap construction um, but yeah you can you can visually see that the metal has to kind of taper a little bit into the middle of the ski um, but yeah metal laminates you know that's not something that we've had in this ski ever i think ever uh, and to have like sheets of metal so pretty darn cool and then up here we get drive tip solution um, and basically what's happening in the tip of the ski uh, there's really a lot going on there's these longitudinal kind of visco fibers that are designed to take you know like little chunks of snow little like vibrations or little imperfections in the snow surface take the vibrations from that and then it runs along these fibers and then dissipates into like what would best be described as kind of an open cell material. So by the point it or by the time it reaches your boot and the, when you would feel it, uh, that energy has dissipated quite a bit or rather has smoothed out into energy that you can kind of use better instead of the ski just kind of bouncing around. Um, so that's it for construction. They also have what Rosignol is calling hard top, um, which again is probably going to be hard for you guys to see, but it's basically this like textured top sheet along the edges of the ski to help protect against dings, scratches, you know, the scuffing that you can kind of get along the edges of your ski. Um, and yeah, having skied these quite a bit already, like this exact pair that's in my hand, uh, they're they're looking pretty good. I think I do think this is a ski that's going to stay really aesthetically nice even over or after a few years of use. Um, so yeah, that's construction. A lot going on in this ski. Pretty darn cool. I think it's really cool that we get metal in this ski, but then we got a lot of a lot of Rosignol stuff in here, and like the tip even kind of still has that Rosignol vibe with with you know it's not like an air tip, but it still feels like a Rosignol to me. Um, and then shape. So shape, we basically, we get two concepts here. We get all trail side cut and we get all trail profile. That's at least what Rosignol is calling it. Um, I would pretty much describe the side cut as extended side cut. And this marks another kind of fundamental difference from that Experience 94 over there, where that ski used much more taper through the tip. This, you're getting the wide point right at the end of the ski. Um, which is pretty darn cool. This is the 176 that I've been skiing. It's got a 16 meter turn radius, so pretty in line with a lot of other skis that we've been testing recently. That 16 meter turn radius is a whole lot of fun for a ski like this. Um, and then the tail shape, you know, I, we, we should show the tail shape too, talking about that kind of extended side cut or the all trail side cut, like Rosignol calls it. There's, you know, again, we get pretty much the widest point of the ski is right at the end instead of a more tapered shape, although the tail of the Experience 94 and previous Experience 88 wasn't as tapered as the tip. Um, so that's kind of the side cut profile. And then all trail profile, uh, we get a pretty long tip rocker. You know, the tip rocker starts about right there. Um, there is 
quite a lot of camber in this ski and I think notably, hello, uh, it's pretty high rise camber too, which really adds to performance, which we'll get to in a second. Um, there is some tail rocker back here, again, less than tip rocker. You know, this is a directional ski, um, but there is a little bit of rise out there in the tail. So that's it. That's construction. That's shape. Here it is. I think it looks fantastic. It's kind of funny because when we first saw this ski on paper, like a picture of it in the catalog, we were kind of like, oh, there's like a lot going on on that thing. <laughs> Seeing it in person, uh, the graphics are like much more subtle and it's got this kind of just blacked out feel. It's not perfectly black, but it does kind of have that vibe, even like the experience, you know, the graphic through the tail is, is kind of muted and more blacked out than pronounced. So yeah, I think the shape is really cool. I think the construction's really cool and I think they look great. Let's talk about performance. Um, just, you know, we talk a lot about objective feelings and subjective feelings when it comes to ski performance. Objectively, I think it's just fair to say that this is a better carving ski. Um, that was the kind of the first thing that we did when I got on it. You know, the first time I saw this ski, I like got all giddy and just knew that I wanted to just go rip some groomer turns. And it does that really, really, really well. Um, it's got some smoothness and some power and a damp feel that like, the previous skis were pretty darn good. They were pretty smooth and, and pretty damp. You know, that line control technology, we talked a lot about the benefits of that. These take it to another level. They just have a, a damp, smooth, powerful feel that I don't think has existed in the experience line, really in any experience ski thus far. Um, and I had just a, a tremendous amount of fun just linking carving turns on them. Um, they do it really, really well. I love the feel of that 16 meter turn radius. I really like the, the tip shape and that drive tip solution. You know, I give a lot of credit to both the construction in this tip and the shape of the tip as well. The way that it initiates a turn is very smooth because you've got all this rocker up here, but it's kind of pulling you into the turn too. So you tip it on edge and it's got this, this smooth entry to the turn, but also like a little bit of a, uh, of not even willingness like it, it, it's it's got some eagerness like it wants to it wants to get into that turn um, but it doesn't like it doesn't feel hooky it's not forcing you to get into that turn and, and this is something that we've talked about a lot recently with other skis is, is how they engage a turn these i think have a really nice balance of not feeling catchy and too demanding but they do you know you put them on edge and you can tell that the ski wants to hook up and and give you some of that, that lateral acceleration or lateral energy that we all really enjoy. Um, and then the construction up here, you know, it, it's not like crazy stiff right in the tip, which I think is kind of important, just the way that this is designed to absorb energy and then give you a quieter feel through, through the mid body of the ski where you're really pushing in your turn. It just, it stays so smooth. Um, without feeling like heavy and, and like just super demanding. Again, I'll probably end up using that word demanding quite a bit to, to describe these skis, but yeah, they feel a little bit lighter, a little bit more compliant. They kind of allow you to play around with carving turn shape a little bit more easily than some skis, which again, I give a lot of credit to the flex up in the tip. I will say that the flex of the whole ski is is pretty darn strong, especially underfoot. So it's really just up here in the tip where it kind of allows you to manipulate your turn shapes more than you can on, you know, some skis that are stiffer, heavier with less camber. Um, and I, I think it's also fair to say that there are skis out there, like those skis that I'm talking about, that they do, like just when it comes down to raw power, I think there are skis that surpass this, but it's all about striking a balance. And I think this has a really, really nice balance of compliance into a turn and then power and stability and grip once you're in that turn. Um, I, having skied them quite a bit, I never really felt like my tail edge was washing out when I didn't want it to. They, they track well, they hold an edge well. I think just again, to go back to what I said 
probably minutes ago. Just objectively, they are better carving skis than the skis that they're replacing. Um, now, my kind of concern when seeing the shape and even after like skiing them a couple of runs and just kind of linking carving turns was like, oh, did they lose some versatility? And sure, I think it's fair to say that it's a less versatile shape, um, but I had kind of an eye-opening experience. We actually got a chance to go down to Sugarbush and ski with Rozzy Dinastar for a day, and we took these out, um, and Bob, as usual, wanted to ski moguls, and we went and skied a mogul run, and Bob was on this ski, um, and at the bottom of the run, he was like, this is a great bump ski, and I was kind of like, really? And he was like, yeah, it's great. And we talked more and more about it, and I got to ski it in some, you know, in some moguls or like some side of the trail terrain. And he's right in the sense that it's relatively narrow and it's relatively light. And again, I'll give a lot of credit to this tip shape and the construction up here, especially if you're the type of skier that skis moguls like Bob. Like if you're really driving down the back side of the mogul and pushing your tip into the next mogul, the way that this tip kind of adapts to that the variations in the terrain and, and you know it like it allows you to kind of push into that mogul without feeling like the ski is just going to buck you so it, it really does make sense that they're good mogul skis now i think you could throw a caveat into that in the sense that if you're like a beginner or a slow speed intermediate mogul skier you still might find the previous ski is a little easier just in the way that it pivots but again, like the, this ski, the, the way that they kind of integrate that all trail rocker, or all trail profile into it, it's not like tremendously catchy back here, um, which is something that I, you know, purposely played around with on groomers too, the way that you can release the tail edge, the way that you can get the ski to, to pivot and, and skid and yeah, make those kind of rhythmic skidding turns. So it carves really well. It's definitely like a notch up in carving performance by far. Um, Bob, in the, in the written portion of this article, I threw in a quote from Bob and he was listing off some skis like Deacon 84, um, like Wingman 86, like RC1 86 GT. Those are all like what we consider kind of, you know, premier wider carving skis. And I think it's like, it's obvious that these skis are in that discussion now where before they felt like they were a little bit more in the like versatile all mountain ski discussion, like ripstick 88s, you know, that kind of shape, like those, those tape tapered shapes, um, QSTs, Mindbender 90s, stuff like that. Now they, they do feel more like a, a premier carving experience, um, which I think makes a lot of sense just in general that Rosnell would go in that direction a little bit. Because um, if you think about the skis that they have, the offerings that they have, like when they had, you know, when, when they had the Sky 7 and the Soul 7, you know, there was a, a pretty big gap in there between Sky 7 and like Experience 94. So they, I think they probably felt like they needed to give that more of a versatile shape or a versatile attitude or brand it kind of more as a versatile ski. Um, now that they have skis like the... Black Ops Holy Shred, like the Escaper, um, those skis kind of fill that gap between a ski like this and then like the wider like senders and sender TIs. So they can kind of take this and and refine it into more of a, a just premier carving ski. Um, so my favorite experience yet, hands down, um, I've always thought that it's a really valuable ski to have in the industry. There's a lot of merits and benefits to the experienced skis for a lot of different skiers. Yeah, uh, I, when we skied them for the first time, I said something silly like best, best experience on an experience or like that's the best experience that I've had on an, an experienced ski or said something silly and tried to just use the word experience as many times as I could. But you got to experience these new experiences. They're, they're really good. They, they genuinely are. Um, it's really fun when a company just totally redoes a ski and we get on it and it's just like, whoa, like, yeah, you changed this ski. This thing is sweet. Um, not to say that the previous skis weren't sweet. It's just this was one of those skis where, yeah, we, we definitely had that reaction. Um, so 
Let us know if you have any questions about them as usual. Um, lots more skis too in the experience line. I can't even remember if we talked about that at the beginning of this video or not, but we will talk about more of them. There's basalt versions of both of the wider widths, um, which also are really fun to ski too. I had a lot of fun skiing the 86 basalt. Um, so let us know if you have any questions and we will see you guys out there on the slopes.